Hi, I'm Mike the Ente, and I've been trying to make this video for a while now, but it's really hard. So if there's anything that you don't understand, please ask questions in the comments. I'm going to try to show you how to play Cardfight Vanguard, which is a card game that I have been enjoying a lot for the past year or so. I'm just going to get right into it. At the start of the game, you and your opponent each shuffle your decks. Um, when I say I, I'm going to be referring to the bottom half here. And when I say my opponent, I'm going to be referring to the top half, even though in real life I'm going to be using... I'm, uh, I'm controlling both sides, because that makes it easier to teach. Okay, so myself and my opponent have shuffled our decks. At the beginning of the game, we draw five cards. I'll draw five. My opponent will draw five. You don't get to see what your opponent draws yet. And you can put any cards back that you want. And redraw them again, like five card draw and poker, after which you shuffle the deck. I'm going to show that off right now. If you don't know what to do, because you're starting out, it's a good idea to put these um, these trigger cards back. They'll have little icons in the top right, and I'll explain what those triggers do later on. But for now, if you don't know what to do, just put your triggers back and redraw until you have five, and then you shuffle your deck. And then my opponent will do the same. My opponent's going to go for one, just one back for my opponent, and shuffle the deck. Very cool. Okay. So now you might notice that there are four cards down here in the bottom right. This is called the ride deck. And for the first three turns of the game, you're going to progress from your grade zero in your ride deck to your grade one, then your grade two, and then your grade three. You start the game after you've done all of your drawing, your starting draw, by getting your grade zero from your red deck and placing it on this center circle here with the V. This is known as the Vanguard circle, and the unit here is known as the Vanguard. This is basically the representation of you. You know how in Yu-Gi-Oh you have to attack the player directly to win or whatever? Or in Magic, you got to do that too. In Vanguard, you have to attack the opponent's Vanguard to win, which is basically them. Okay, I will go first. At the start of your turn, you draw a card. And then, because I'm not at grade 3 yet, you have to discard a card from your hand and then ride from the next card from your ride deck. So I'll discard this Zon girl right here. And then I'll ride Iron Ball Dragon Anki Bowler from the ride deck. See, now this is the grade one. Now, you can only call cards that are the same grade or lower as your Vanguard. So I could actually call another Anki Bowler to one of these rear guard circles. I'll explain what those do in a moment. But I can't call a Lek Blow Dragon because a Lek Blow Dragon is a grade two. I'm actually not going to call anything because on your first turn, you usually can't do all that much. So I'm just going to pass. You can't attack if you go first. And I'll show what attacking is soon enough. Speaking of which, it's my opponent's turn to play. My opponent will draw. My opponent will discard to ride. And because they went second, they get to draw again after they ride. Now my opponent's going to call a rear guard. They're going to call... What's this card's name? Sh Shadow Bow Archer Lizana here. Why are they calling this card to the back row? Well, you have your Vanguard, and then you have your two front row rear guard circles. The names are a little weird, but just bear with me, please. Units in the front row can attack. Sounds easy enough. Units in the back row can boost. So my opponent's going to enter the battle phase. My opponent will attack my Vanguard with Blaster Javelin here, boosted by Shadow Bow Archer Lizana. When you boost, you add a unit's power to the unit in front of it. So Blaster Javelin is 8,000 power. Lizana also has 8,000 power. So right now, Blaster Javelin is attacking me for 16,000 power. The power of the attacking unit is 16. My uh, Vanguard, who is being attacked, only has 8,000 power. If an attack has the same power or greater than the unit that it's trying to attack, the attack will go through. Because my opponent's vanguard is attacking my vanguard, 
If this attack goes through, I'll take a damage. To show off that, I'm not going to guard. I'll explain guarding just a little bit later. So for now, I've chosen not to guard. My opponent's attacking me. And because my opponent is using their Vanguard to attack, they perform a drive check. For a drive check, you reveal the top card of your deck and add it to your hand. Kachow. It's a gigantic beater. Now, this is where triggers come in. If you happen to reveal a trigger, very cool things happen. I didn't reveal a trigger, so nothing cool happens. The card just goes into their hand. And because the attack went through, 16 versus 8,000, I take a damage. So I take the top card of my deck and put it in the damage zone here. Kachow. I get a heal trigger, but that doesn't do anything. Damage checks also check for heal triggers. Um, or any kind of trigger, I should say. Usually, if you get a heal trigger... Okay, whenever you get a trigger, period, you choose somebody to give 10,000 power to. Note that my Vanguard is now at 18 instead of 8. And you activated an additional effect depending on what kind of trigger it is. The heal trigger, if you're at the same number of damage or more than your opponent, when the trigger is revealed, you can actually put a card from the damage zone into the discard pile. However, technically speaking, I'm going to put this back on top of the deck, I'm at zero damage when I reveal the heal trigger. So... I don't actually heal the damage that is itself the heal trigger. Because technically the heal trigger is not in the damage zone yet. Technically speaking, you can never remove a heal trigger that you damage check. Because it goes into the trigger zone to be checked first to see if it's a trigger before going into damage. I really hope that makes sense. That is one of the most complex things that I had to learn when, when starting this game. <sighs> anyway, my opponent cannot attack anymore, so my opponent's turn is over, and that means all trigger boosts go away. That includes my heal trigger, so now I'm back at 8,000. I'm going to start my next turn. I'll draw, and then I will discard another heal trigger to ride Elect Blow Dragon. Elect Blow Dragon now has 10,000 power as opposed to Blaster Javelin's 8,000. I'm actually going to play down another Elect Blow Dragon. And I'll call an Anki Bowler behind that Electro Black. Ele Ele oh my god. Calling the Anki Bowler behind Elect Blow Dragon. I can speak words. Battle phase time. I'm going to attack my opponent's Vanguard with Elect Blow Dragon. But what if my opponent doesn't want to take damage? Obviously, it's not good to take damage. If you get six cards in your damage zone, you lose the game. So my opponent's going to try guarding from hand. You can call cards from your hand to try to block an attack. Right here, my opponent will call Shadow Ball Archer Luzana to the Guardian Circle. Note the 5,000 shield. When you're guarding, the 5,000 shield is what gets added to your defending unit's power. So, Blaster Javelin's 8,000 plus Lizana's 5,000 makes a total of 13,000. Obviously, that's more than 10,000 power, so my attack won't get through. However, I have a drive check. And if my drive check reveals a trigger, I can give the power to my Vanguard Elect, elect Blow Dragon. I want to say Electro, because like that's an actual word. <laughs> anyway... If I get a trigger here, I can give the 10,000 power to Elect Blow Dragon and the attack will go through anyway. So this is known as a one to pass because if I if my drive check reveals one trigger, the attack will pass through anyway. Let's see what happens. I do get a trigger. It's a draw trigger. A draw trigger lets me give 10,000 power to somebody. I'll give it to my Vanguard and I get to draw an additional card. It's different from a drive check, though. This is not a drive check. So even though I drew a trigger card, that trigger doesn't activate. Only the draw trigger does. Anyway, after guarding, a card gets put in the drop zone, the, basically the discard pile, the graveyard, whatever you want to call it. Since the attack went through, my opponent takes a damage. Oh, my opponent got a tr critical trigger. That's cool. You give 10,000 power to somebody. Obviously, my opponent's going to choose the vanguard. And normally, you would get to give an extra critical to somebody. This means that if your attack goes through, 
you'll deal two damage instead of one. So technically speaking, the opponent does have to give a critical to somebody, but obviously if you're defending, you're not going to be dealing damage anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now my Elect Blow Dragon, boosted by Anki Bowler, will try to attack the Vanguard again. Now it's 18,000 versus 18,000. My opponent is going to go with a block with Blaster Javelin here. And the rear guards do not perform drive checks. So my opponent is completely safe here. The attack doesn't go through. Unfortunate. My opponent retires Blaster Javelin. And now I end my turn. And all of the boosts go away. That includes my offensive draw trigger and my opponent's defensive critical trigger. So now it's my opponent's next turn. My opponent will draw. My opponent will discard to ride. Now here's the thing. Blaster Javelin has a skill. When it's rode upon by Blaster Dark, you reveal the top card of your deck and you can call it to the rear guard as rested if it is a unit card. That is what that little symbol means with the uh, with the card facing sideways. Whenever you might notice that three all of my all of my units are currently sideways. They are in the rested position. You have to be standing, that is facing forward to attack or boost so basically by calling a card as rested you get an extra body on the board for next turn but you don't get to attack or boost with it for now so my opponent discarded and will ride a blaster dark and because of blaster javelin skill they will reveal the top card of the deck they show facado which is a grade 3 card. That's pretty cool. But it has to go on the battlefield tapped, so to speak. So now it's rested. And a Blaster Dark also has a skill. When it rides, you can counter blast one and retire a rear guard. Now retiring a rear guard is, of course, putting it into the, uh, the drop zone. So let's just discard Fasado here. It's a nice little combo. Blaster Javelin calls out a guy that can't attack. Blaster Darker moves it anyway. Now, what's a Counter Blast? That is taking any of these cards in your damage zone from face up and putting them back down. Damage cards always go into the damage zone face up because that's how you Counter Blast. Essentially, a Counter Blast lets you come back. You know, you're counter attacking. By taking damage, you can activate more skills. Now, speaking of which, let's go back to Blaster Dark. Blaster Dark skill, Counter Blast, and Retire a Rear Guard. My opponent has done that. So now my opponent can choose one of my Rear Guards and Retire it. And then Blaster Dark gets an extra drive for this turn. Let's say my opponent retires Anki Bowler. I have to discard that. Very cool. Now my opponent will play another Blaster Dark for fun. And now it's my opponent's battle phase. My opponent will attack my Vanguard with Blaster Dark, boosted by Lizana for 18,000 power and two drives. That is, of course, a lot to take in, so I think I'm going to go with a no guard on that. Opponent will drive check the first time, no trigger, and the second time, it's the over trigger. Oh boy, everyone's favorite mechanic. So yeah, um, everyone hates the over trigger. I think it's very funny, but it is an extremely controversial card. Instead of giving 10,000 power, you give 100 million power to somebody. So given that my opponent's blast a vanguard attack is already hitting, he's obviously giving it to Blaster Dark on the rear guard. Um, you remove the over trigger from the game instead of adding it to your hand, and then you draw a card and give one of your units 100 million power. Cool. Every nation... Oh, by the way, I should note, you have to build a deck composed of 50 cards, and they have to all be from the same nation. Like, all of my cards are Dragon Empire, all of my opponent's cards are Keter Sanctuary. And every nation has an over-trigger with a unique additional effect. The Keter Sanctuary over trigger says that the opponents also perform drive checks as rear guards. Or rather, whoever 
checks it. I mean, obviously, if you're using Heater, then you're not the opponent. You get the idea, though. So my opponent drew and gave 100 million power to somebody. Great. I take a damage. Cool. Now my opponent will attack my Vanguard with Blaster Dark for 100 million power. That's a lot of power. I'm going to use a Sentinel to block it anyway. These cards right here, these Sentinels, you can only have four of them in a deck. They're obviously very useful cards. You guard with it. And you discard another card from your hand, and no matter how much power the opponent has, the attack will not go through. Even if it's 100 million. Now, of course, my opponent still performs a drive check, but it doesn't really matter what kind of trigger my opponent gets because that attack's not going through. And that's the end of my opponent's turn. The 100 million boost goes away. Now I will stand and I will draw. <sighs> and now I'm going to discard to ride heavy artillery of dust storm eugene i'm going to play anki bowler down and then i'm going to use eugene's skill i can re i can technically i'm in the main phase i can retire no not retire i can rest two of my own rear guards and i'll do that i will rest elect blow dragon and anki bowler choose one of my opponent's rear guards retire it and then Eugene gets 10,000 until the end of the turn. I'm going to say retire Eugene. I mean, retire Blaster Dark, sorry. And now Eugene gets 10,000 for the turn. Now, unfortunately, I can't attack with these two, but Eugene's attack is almost sure to hit. 23,000 power to Blaster Dark. And my opponent's not going to guard. Grade threes, by default, have twin drive. That means that instead of one drive check, they perform two. So we'll go with check number one, no trigger, and check number two, a front trigger. Instead of choosing one unit to add 10,000 to, a front trigger adds 10,000 power to everything in the front row. Of course, that trigger is kind of wasted because my Eugene's attack is already going through and the Lech Blow cannot attack this turn. But it's nice to have because triggers have 15,000 shield, unless they're a draw trigger. Draw triggers have 5,000 shield, but critical front and heal triggers have 15 which is very nice for defense anyway the attack went through my opponent takes a damage they get a front trigger but again it doesn't really matter because my turn is over my opponent will stand and draw oh yes i think you might have noticed it by now but at the start of your turn you restand all of your units so they can attack and boost again all right my opponent will draw and then my opponent will discard. Let's get rid of you. Let's bring out Phantom Blaster Dragon. When Phantom Blaster Dragon is placed in the Vanguard Circle, you can choose a Blaster Dark from your soul and call it out. That's pretty nice. Get a free body on the board. Alrighty. Hmm, what do I want to do? Rather, what does my opponent want to do? Haha. -ha. Let's say attacking with Knight of War Damage Fasado. All right. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to have my opponent misplay here to show you off a cool mechanic. Opponent's going to go into battle phase. Opponent will attack my Vanguard with Fasado. This is 13,000 power against 13. However, Grade 2s, such as my Elect Blow Dragon, have an ability called Intercept. You can move them from the front rear guard circle to the guardian circle and block with them as if you're using a card from your hand to guard. Elect Blow Dragon plus the 13 from Eugene is a total of 18,000 power, so Fasado's attack does not go through. Obviously, in a real game, you might want to attack a rear guard first. If you attack a rear guard and that attack goes through, the rear guard retires. The optimal move would have probably been to attack a Lech Blow with Blaster Dark first, because that's 10,000 and can't hit my Vanguard anyway. A little bit of strategy mixed in for you there. Anyway, uh, Phantom Blaster Dragon will now attack my Vanguard for 21,000 power. And I'm going to say no guard to that. So my opponent now performs two drives. Check one. That is a critical trigger. I don't know if you noticed that, but my opponent got a... Wait. Did I not right-click? There we go. That's a critical trigger. Cool. 
10,000 power to Blaster Dark, and a critical to Phantom Blaster Dragon. You can apply the power and the crit to different units. Check number two. No trigger there. But I take two damage instead of one because Phantom Blaster Dragon got the crit. So damage check one, a draw trigger. 10,000 power to my Vanguard and I draw. And then damage check two, no trigger. And even though my opponent got a trigger, Blaster Dark only has 20,000 power. Thanks to my defensive draw trigger, I'm at 23, so the attack doesn't go through. So my opponent will end their turn. <coughs> now I will stand and draw and do a cool thing called Persona Ride. Once you're done riding from your ride deck, if you have a card with the same name as your Vanguard in your hand, you can see I have another Eugene here, I can ride it at the beginning of my turn after drawing. Then I get to draw another card, and for the whole turn, all of my front row units will get 10,000 power. Very cool. Alrighty. Hmm, let's go with... Elect Blow Dragon here. And Tribash over here. Look at all of that power. Very cool. Hmm. Actually... I'm going to go with, I'm going to play down Volcanic Gun Dragon because even though grade threes, oh yes, I forgot to mention this, only grade ones and grade zeros can boost. So you can't just play down a bunch of grade threes and expect to deal a bajillion damage with them all because they have 13,000 power and instead of eight. There actually is a deck that relies on giving your grade threes boost, but don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use Eugene's skill. I'm going to rest Volcanic Gun Dragon and Anki Bowler to retire. Let's retire Blaster Dark. Because you can't choose Fasado because it says it. Fasado cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So retire Blaster Dark and give Eugene 10,000 power for the turn. Very cool. Alrighty. Battle phase time. Tribash will attempt to attack Phantom Blaster Dragon for 23,000 power. That's quite a bit. But, yeah, no. My opponent's going to no guard that. Because if my opponent gets a defensive trigger, guarding the rest of my attacks is going to be much easier. So, damage check. It's a front trigger. So, yeah. Now my Persona Ride has effectively been cancelled out by the opponent's front trigger. That's cool. Alrighty. However, Eugene is coming in hot. Tribash is an ability that says when my Vanguard attacks, if my opponent has two or less rear guards, which is of course true, I can put Tribash into my soul. That's basically putting it underneath the Vanguard. That is where all of the cards that I... Can I highlight the soul? That is where all of the cards that I previously rode go to. So, that's fun. And Soul Blasting, which is removing cards from the soul, discarding them, is another kind of um, resource that you can use. But for now, uh, back to Tribash. I put Tribash into soul, and my Vanguard gets a critical. So now, even without getting a critical trigger, if this attack goes through, my opponent will have to take two damage instead of one. Now, of course, my opponent's not going to stand for that. My opponent's going to say... Perfect guard. They're going to use a sentinel of their own. And then they'll discard gigantic beater. And now no matter what happens, my attack won't get through. Unfortunate. But I still get to perform twin drive. Check one. A front trigger. Power to elect blow, I suppose. And technically Eugene. And check two. A draw trigger. Given that my vanguard's attack's not hitting anyway, power to elect blow and I draw. Very cool. And now... Elect Blow Dragon will attack Phantom Blaster Dragon for 40,000 power. That's a lot, so my opponent's going to go with a no guard on that one. Damage check is Fasado. I end my turn. Boosts go away. My opponent starts their turn and draw. And then my opponent goes in for a Persona Ride. They draw. Their front row is getting 10,000 power. My opponent will play down Blaster Dark and start attacking 
Opponent's going to start by attacking a Lek Blow Dragon, 20 versus 10,000 power. And that's fine. Next, my opponent's going to try to attack me with Phantom Blaster Dragon for 31,000 power. That's a lot of power. And also, I'm at 4 damage. So if my opponent gets a critical trigger, I lose the game. That's not good. I'm going to go for a perfect guard just to be safe. Opponent's drive check number 1. No tr did that drive? I don't think that drove check. Come on. My laptop does not like to right click even when I try to hit the right side of the mouse pad. Very cool. There it is. Okay. Drive check Phantom Blaster Dragon. And number two is no trigger as well. It's just a rear guard. Okay. And Fasado now attacks my Vanguard. I still don't want to take this. So I'm going to block it for 15,000 with, with my front trigger that I got earlier. Cool. Now my opponent's turn is over. I'm no longer being attacked. And I stand and draw. And once again, Persona Ride. I draw again. My front row is getting 10,000 power for this turn. Hmm. Let's see here. Well, I, oh no, I do, I can retire one of my opponent's guys. That's good. All right, I'm going to use Eugene's skill. Actually, no. Before I do that, I'm going to play this Nawful guy. And then I'm going to use Eugene's skill to rest Nawful and Anki Bowler. Then retire Blaster Dark. And then Eugene gets 10,000 power for the turn. Then I'm going to use Nawful Skill, which binds itself, which basically puts it in a separate graveyard. And choose up to two normal units from your drop other than Sentinels and put them into your soul. I'm just going to put two Electro Elect Blow Dragons into my soul. And Eugene has a skill where I, if I retired an opponent's rear guard this turn... I'll, I can Soul Blast 5 and then look at the same number of cards from the top of my deck as the number of my opponent's open rear guard circles and then call as many of them to rear to the rear guard circles as I want, which in this case would be 3. So, time to use Eugene's Big Boy Soul Blast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 3 cards from the top of my deck. Look at all of these cards. Let's call a Tribash over here. And then I suppose I'll call a Lekblow Dragon over to this side. And then Hayashi Kaze behind my Vanguard. Sentinels are usually grade one. So if I can't use it to guard, I might as well use it to boost. Alrighty. Time to hopefully win this game. Actually, let's move Volcanic Gun Dragon in front. That's right. At any time, you can swap rear guards between columns. Or between... No, within a column. You cannot swap them between rows. So I can swap Elect Blow and Volcanic Gun as much as I want, but... I cannot swap Hayashi Kaze and Elect Blow. Cool. Um, you can also move them between circles, even if there's nothing... Even if the, it's the only one in its column. Just figured I should say that. Anyway, battle phase time. 40,000th hour at Phantom Blaster Dragon. My opponent is at 4 damage, so if I get a critical, I win. So my opponent's going to perfect guard that, just like how I did last time. Very cool. Check 1. No trigger. Check two. No trigger. Unfortunate for me. But I still have two very big attacks happening. So let's go for 23,000 to the Vanguard. I don't get an extra 5,000 because my opponent still has Fasado. 23K. That's going to get blocked with a trigger. And I will now attack the Vanguard with Tribash. And my opponent will again use a trigger to try to block that. Very cool. And now I end my turn. And my opponent draws. 
They stand first. And then they draw. And then they Persona Ride again. So they draw now. And... Hmm... Opponent will play Blaster Dark down, and then my opponent's going to use Phantom Blaster Dragon skill. By retiring three of their own rear guards and counter blasting one, so retire one, retire two, retire three, my opponent gets to choose two of my rear guards to retire, and then Phantom Blaster Dragon gets 10,000 power and a critical for the turn. So my opponent is going to retire Tribash and Volcanic Gun. So, goodbye to Tribash and Volcanic. Opponent gets 10,000 power and a crit. And then my opponent will play Reverse Quail Knight Nuada. Alright. Phantom Blast Dragon comes in for 33,000 power and a critical against my Vanguard. I am not in a good spot here because... I can do thir 20. Th I have 30,000 shield plus my Vanguard. That's 43,000 power, but if my opponent gets a single trigger, they still pass. Because remember, even if the power is the same or greater, the attack goes through. So my only hope is that my opponent goes for the one to pass and doesn't get it. No trigger there. And the second check, it's a draw trigger. Opponent gives the power to their Vanguard and draws. All right, it's the moment of truth. I either draw a heal trigger, or check it rather, or the game's over. Check one, no trigger. Check two, no trigger. And that's Vanguard. I hope you understood. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, that took over half an hour. Jesus Christ. I really hope that that was understandable. There are things that I didn't even go over, like order cards. Um... Yeah, I don't know. If you have any questions about the basics of Vanguard, if you want me to do a follow-up video explaining some of the things that I didn't in this episode, or video, whatever, please say so. Like and subscribe or whatever. Woo!